Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 24th of December. India approves funds for census and population survey. Over 100 terrorists neutralized in over 24 hours in Afghanistan. And people across India gear up to celebrate Christmas. And now for all the details, India's federal cabinet approved funds on Tuesday for a census and population survey to be conducted in 2020. Union Minister Prakash Javdekar clarified the survey has nothing to do with the National Register of Citizens or NRC, which has faced opposition in recent days. India's federal cabinet on Tuesday approved funds worth 87.54 billion rupees for conducting the census and 39.41 billion rupees for updating population survey known as the National Population Register or NPR to be conducted in 2020. In a press briefing, Union Minister Prakash Javadekar said that no documents or biometrics will be taken during the National Population Register process which will be held between April and September 2020 before the census, which is due to start from February 2021. The census collects data on population, economic activity, social and cultural aspects, migration and demography, down to the lowest administrative level. While the NPR is intended to create a comprehensive identity database of every resident of India. The provision is nearly 13,000 crore rupees. 8,754 crore, crore rupees for census and 3,941 crores for NPR. So this will really benefit for target beneficiary schemes. The announcement came amid fears that the database could be used to build the National Register of Citizens or NRC that has been opposed by hundreds of thousands of people across the country in recent days. Javadekar, however, clarified the population survey has nothing to do with NRC. A major fire broke out at a shoe factory in an industrial area in New Delhi early on Tuesday. No casualties were, however, reported in the incident, which came a day after nine persons were killed in a fire that broke out in a cloth go down in the Indian capital. A major fire broke out in a shoe factory in Indian capital New Delhi's Narela area in the early hours of Tuesday. No casualties were, however, reported in the incident. A fire department official said that the call regarding the fire in Narela industrial area was received around 5 a.m., after which 22 fire tenders were pressed into service. The official said three firemen sustained minor injuries and were given first aid after which they were back on the job as firefighting operations continued and it was believed that no one was trapped inside the building. The incident came a day after at least nine people, including three children, were killed in a cloth go down in the Indian capital. Last month, at least 43 people were killed in a fire in New Delhi that swept through a factory where labourers were sleeping. The news from Pakistan, prominent lawyer and leader of ruling Pakistan, Tehrike Insaf, Baba Rawan, has hinted that the government may move to court regarding the verdict in the high treason case against former President Parvez Musharraf. A special court earlier this month had a death sentence to Musharraf for imposing a state of emergency in 2007. Former law minister and ruling Pakistan, Tehrike Insaf, or PTI leader Baba Rawan has claimed that the government is examining the option of challenging the conviction of former President Parvez Musharraf. 
Awan on Monday said the government would adopt legal and constitutional procedure in Musharraf's case and may approach the Supreme Court against the verdict in the high treason case, local media reported. The remarks came days after Pakistan's law minister Farooq Naseem announced the federal government will approach the Supreme Judicial Council in the country with a plea against the special court's judge for issuing a bizarre order that said Musharraf's body should be hanged for three days if he dies before his execution. The special court on December 17 had sentenced the former military ruler to death for imposing a state of emergency in 2007. 76-year-old Musharraf, in response in a video message from his hospital bed in Dubai, said, The special court's decision is the result of a personal vendetta. Musharraf added that the allegations against him are politically motivated and the high treason is an unprecedented case in which neither the defendant nor his lawyer were allowed to defend. Moving on, students of Karakoram International University in Gilgit, Baltistan yet again staged a protest against fees hike and fake promises of their fees refund. They demanded reimbursement of their fees as part of the 2011 government scheme. Students of Karakoram International University in Gilgit, Baltistan have yet again intensified protests against Pakistan, claiming the refund of the fees promised at the time of their admissions have been denied now. The students in the illegally occupied region have been protesting for months now due to the fees hike and fake promises of fees refunds. The demonstrators said the government under a scholarship scheme in 2011 promised to reimburse their fees but now the university administration, which operates at the commands of Islamabad, has been apathic to the crisis and has been pressurizing the students to pay for their education. ये जो है 2011 में प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने यहां पर एक स्कीम बनाया था कि जो मास्टर्स के स्टूडेंट्स होंगे वो फीस जो है उनकी माफ होगी जैसे कि आप लोग जानते हैं कि गिलगितस्तान में लोग इतने फाइनेंशियली स्ट्रांग नहीं है कि वो इतने बड़े फीस जो है वो दे सके तो इसीलिए जहां पे गवर्नमेंट ने अगर ये वादा किया है लोगों से कि वो फीस माफ कर देंगे तो उनको अपने वादे पे उतना चाहिए और इस पे काम करना चाहिए हमारा फर्स्ट जो मुतालबा है प्राइम मिनिस्टर फी रिएम्बर्समेंट स्कीम जो 2011 से पीपीपी के गवर्नमेंट में इसको अप्रूवल दिया गया था 2021 तक बाद में नवाज शरीफ साहब ने भी इसको एक्सटेंड किया लेकिन बदकिस्मती से हमारे जो तब्दीली सरकार है उसने इसको खत्म किया इसके हम पुरजोर मजम्मत करते हैं अगर कि ये मसला यहां पर हल नहीं हुआ तो हमारा अगर अल्लाह अमल जो है वो ऑल ओवर गिली पाकिस्तान को जाम करना है और हो सकता हम जाएंगे चौकी चौकी पे भी जाके हमने बिलाव करना है the university students claim that the authorities have cheated them and are trying to convert their education, a basic human right, into a luxury for them. Locals in the illegally occupied region blame Pakistan of not giving them even their basic rights and claim that it fears an education boom in the youth will be dangerous for their rule. In news from Afghanistan, top U.S. official Alice Wells has said that concrete steps must be taken early on to form an inclusive negotiating team by Afghanistan's new government. The remarks came after preliminary vote results of Afghan presidential election were announced earlier this week. U.S. Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asia, Alice Wells, has said that concrete steps must be taken early on to form an inclusive negotiating team by Afghanistan's government, whomever that is. The remarks by Wells came after Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission announced preliminary results from September's balloting on Sunday, according to which incumbent President Ashraf Ghani appears to have narrowly won a second term. Wells was presumably referring to the intra-Afghan negotiations to be discussed in the U.S. Taliban talks, which are witnessing a brief pause over continued violence by Taliban. Main contender in the presidential race, Abdullah Abdullah, has rejected the outcome as illegitimate. Meanwhile, Kabul residents gave mixed reactions about the announcement, as many Afghans expressed fears of a profoundly flawed vote. وطن ما روز بروز دولت خراب شدن است اقتصاد مردم زیر صفر است به کاری با وجه خود رسیده و کلگی نگران نتایج انتخابات بودن ملت امیر می خواستن که نتیجه اعلان بشه ما کل ما زمین نتیجه که اعلان شده راضی هستیم دی ایندیپندنت الیکشن کمیشن سید 
The total turnout in the presidential election was more than 1.8 million, with Ghani securing 50.64 percent, enough to win the first round of voting. By law, over the next three days, the Independent Election Complaints Commission will be open to receive registered complaints about the process, and then the poll body will spend the next 37 to 39 days addressing them. More news from Afghanistan. Afghanistan's defense ministry on Tuesday said over 100 terrorists were neutralized and 45 others suffered injuries in operations conducted by the Afghan forces in the last 24 hours. This comes a day after one U.S. service member was killed during clashes between the NATO-led government forces and the Taliban. Over 100 terrorists were neutralized, and 45 others suffered injuries in operations conducted by the Afghan forces in the last 24 hours. Afghanistan's defense ministry said in a tweet on Tuesday. The ministry said the forces conducted 18 operations in 15 different provinces of the country, from where around five terrorists were also arrested. Groups of the killed and arrested terrorists were not, however, clarified by the ministry. This came a day after one U.S. soldier of the NATO-led Resolute Support Mission in Afghanistan was killed during clashes with Taliban militants. The Afghan security forces have recently beefed up security operations against the Taliban fighters, who have been attempting to take territory and consolidate their positions in the countryside ahead of winter. The latest casualty occurred as a U.S. delegation and Taliban representatives restarted earlier this month. A stalled negotiation after a lull in Gulf state of Qatar. Christmas celebrations in parts of India began as people were seen flocking to markets to buy essential items ahead of the festival. Christmas is celebrated with much pomp and fervor across India. People in parts of India are flocking markets to buy essential items as they gear up to celebrate the festival of Christmas. Christmas trees, lights, bells, caps, cakes are put on display in southern Kochi city as scores of customers were seen in crowded markets purchasing these items along with new clothes for the occasion. Every year there will be a rush in this this season over here because we get different variety of decoration items from all over the world. They are, they kept over here, so it is a uh, every year this phenomenon will be there. The evening you can see the, how much rush will be there because. It is a holiday, so it's a day of celebration. Meanwhile, northeastern Dimapur city was also soaked in the festive spirit, with people enjoying carnivals, music, and food as the celebrations began. Celebration of Christmas is marked by carols, cakes, candles, glittering Christmas trees, and exchange of gifts. This is like, as we can all see, this uh, the atmosphere behind us. It's a festive season, so. Um, I also, uh, on, along with my family, we are looking for work uh, to have a good time of this month. Christians form less than three percent of India's more than one billion population, but Christmas is now widely celebrated in metros and other big cities with much pomp, fervor, and devotion. The day is also celebrated by preparing special dishes across India. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India approves funds for census and population survey. Over 100 terrorists neutralized in over 24 hours in Afghanistan. And people across India gear up to celebrate Christmas. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.